Hello everybody and welcome back. In this chapter, I will discuss three key concepts. Violently vacating the forking square, swapping victims of the fork, and using checks to create a new fork. I'll start with violently vacating the forking square. Here it's white to play. White is up by two pawns. So he should try to exchange as many pieces as possible and then promote his pawns. White's rook on f6 doesn't allow his knight to occupy f6. So white should move his rook out of the way and make way for his knight to come to f6 to fork black's king and rook. Hence rook capture c6 is the best option for white. No other rook move is stronger. After b7 captures rook, knight f6 check wins black's rook. Now it looks like black has almost equalized, but actually white is much better with a strong pawn chain and passed pawn on h6. White is actually solid. In fact it's an easy win for white. After h7, black really has nothing to play for. It's white's turn. White's queen occupies a square on which the knight has a potential fork. Again white has to violently vacate the forking square. This is achieved by queen a8 check. After king h7, white has knight f3, forking black's queen and rook. Notice that after the knight fork, black has no good checks available. If black's queen could check the king, it would have to move, after which black gets a chance to save both his pieces. This ruins the fork. Hence this point is to be kept in mind whenever forks are designed. In this position here, it's white's turn. And again white's queen sits on the forking square, preventing knight e6 check. Hence white plays queen captures knight. After rook captures queen, white plays knight e6 check, poking black's king and queen. After the sequence, white wins a knight free of cost. Let's go back and analyze the position more deeply. Here the rook on c1 plays an important role, without which none of the sequence would work. Because after knight e6 check and king h8, knight captures queen is not possible because of rook captures rook. Such details cannot be overlooked. Hence if the rook on c1 would be on say c2, black could simply play rook captures f1 checkmate. Now let's move on to swapping victims of the fork. In this puzzle, it's black to play. If black is able to exchange his rook for white's minor pieces, he definitely has a win. Right now white's knight defends c5. If white's knight was replaced by another piece, knight c5 check would be possible. Hence black plays rook captures knight. After bishop captures rook, black has knight c5 check, picking up the light squared bishop. Now black has an easy win. What would you play here as white? Knight captures e7, forks black's king and knight, but that would not be profitable at the moment. If black's knight was replaced by a queen, it would turn into a dangerous fork and win lots of material. With this in mind, white starts with queen captures knight. After queen captures queen, white plays knight captures bishop check regaining his queen and picking up two minor pieces in return. Have a look at this position. It's white's turn. The first idea is to notice that knight f5 forks the king and the piece on d4, which is a knight. The second idea is to exchange the knight for another piece and then play knight f5. White wins with rook captures knight. After rook captures rook, Knight f5 check picks up the rook. Pause the video and try to find the best sequence for white. It's a little complex so it might take a few minutes to arrive at the solution. White's knight has a fork in two moves. It can jump to f8 and then g6, forking back's king and knight. As usual, the knight has to be replaced by a better target. White can't start with queen captures knight because the fork requires two knight moves. 
Hence white starts with knight f8, threatening knight captures queen. Now any queen move loses the knight. Let's see how. Suppose black plays queen a7, still protecting the knight. This is the point where white replaces the target with queen captures knight. Now black can't play queen captures queen. Thus white wins the knight, free of cost. However, if black still decides to play queen captures queen, white has knight g6 check, forking the king and the queen. Now white is up a knight and should be able to win the game. Now I will discuss the third concept of using checks to create new forks. Black's king has limited escape squares in this position. White plays rook a8 check, forcing the king to g7. After this white has knight e8 check, winning the queen and the game. What can white play here? The objective is to move the king to f8 and then play knight e6 check and win the queen. This is easily achieved by queen h7 check. After king f8, white plays knight e6 check just as planned. Pause the video and see if you can find the best move for white. White plays bishop d5 check. After king h8, white has knight f7 check, winning black's queen. This is another example of king immobility. After white plays rook f8 check, black's only option is to play queen captures rook. Also exploiting the fact that black's pawn on h7 is pinned, White plays knight g6 check, poking black's queen and king. Now white is up the exchange. This is the last position for today. Pause the video and see if you can find white's best move. Hope you came up with queen g4. If the king goes to h8, white has queen g7 checkmate. Hence black must play queen g6 to block the check. Now white has a beautiful fork on e7, winning the queen.